done. How are we all? Hang on. I'm just fixing my hair because it's falling out on me and annoying me. Welcome to uh, another live. Today we are prepping. We're starting our bedroom set. So yesterday I didn't quite get as far as what I have today, um, but I've taken advantage of the sun this morning and I've got the tops about 90% there. Um, the very top is sanded completely. Um, I just need to do a bit of hand sanding on this bit of detail. So they're nearly done. But let me show you what, what we're working on first. Today I'm gonna prep, I, I apologize, that's my son in the background. He has a curriculum day today. He's been told to be on his best behavior while I do this, but let's see how we go. Um, let me show you what we're working on, but we're going to prep one of the bedsides today. Um, I have prepped the rest with the electric sander this morning, just to sort of get them done that little bit faster, but I'm gonna show you how you do it without an electric sander and just talk about um, a damaged finish and what you need to do before you start painting. So we're gonna have a chat about that, but let me show you what we're working on first. Um, what are we doing here? Oliver's now here. <laughs> All right, so we've got a six drawer pine dresser. Now these all have this really um, ready finish. This is, um, these are solid and they are heavy. Like this is all thick timber. Normally you'd have like, this would be a bit of trim and you'd only have like a thinner piece of timber, but this is all like inch thick timber. Thank you Oliver for that. Um, so we've got a six straw dresser, two bedside tables, these are all the drawers. Um, so they've got this beautiful bit of detailing in, in there and then they've got this bit of detail as well. So they're absolutely gorgeous. This is a, let me turn you around again. This is a commission set for a client. She brought another piece from me. Um, they're about to move into a new house and they just wanted a really nice set to go with. I think they had metal beds. So I think it's gonna go really, really nicely from what she's described. I think it's a perfect um, color choice and the perfect set as well. They're a really, really nice set. They have got, where's my handles one? They've got these beautiful handles, which you either love them or hate them. I really like them. Beautiful handles. They've got a bit of wear and tear and patina on them. Um, so I'm going to clean these up, but we're gonna try and keep as much of that patina as well. And we're gonna be painting this full set with carbon, which is Purico's black. Oliver, please, go and sit down. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Parenting at the same time. Um, I, did, I did offload Harry onto Joe, though. So, Purico's Carbon Black. We're, we're using silk finish because it's all in one. It's got that built-in top coat. We're not getting fancy. We're not sealing these any further. This is what... This is the perfect choice for today. So, this is what we're using. Um, and then the tops of them, the timber... We're actually going to be staining that quite dark. So we're gonna do a mixture of sable and, uh, not carbon, midnight on the top. Same as what we did on my, I don't think you can see it. Hang on, where's my finger? The green grungy sideboard up there hiding behind my whiteboard. Um, so this is gonna be a fun set of lives. I'm not gonna do all of the prep and all of the painting like I normally do in a live. I'm just gonna do like one bedside table and what I've done to one, I'm doing to the rest. Just so that you're not sitting through hours and hours of footage. We're just trying to be a little bit more succinct. Is that the word? All right, so let's come in a little bit. So I have sanded the bodies with an electric sander um, and the drawers as well, but I've left one of the drawers. Let me bring you over here. Um, we've left one of the drawers in uh, original. So I haven't touched this at all at the moment. You can see it's got the press of the... Uh, handle and it's got a really flaky finish and this all over all of this finish was really really damaged so hang on where was the flaky bits down here so see how it looks like it's chipped off um really common i find pine pieces a lot of the time have got some form of flaky finish it's just when the finish starts to fa fail so we've got where was the other bits down here, a little bit there. That's more from where, where your hands have touched it a lot. Um, up here. So see how it just looks like it's chipped off? Now the problem with that is if I was to put paint straight over the top, go back in the hole. <laughs> if I was to put paint straight over the top of that, that's gonna keep failing. That's not a stable surface. Um, and my paint will eventually come off as well. It might take six months, might take several years, 
but with enough knocks, it will eventually come off as well. Might start coming off straight away. At the moment, I can run my fingernail over that, and it's just, it's coming off underneath my fingernail because it's just, it's failed. It's not adhering to the timber any longer. So um, we have to fix that. We can't paint over that. It has to come off. Um, and this is really the only situation where um, you will do heavier sanding prior to painting. The rest of the time, you're just gonna do a quick scruff sand all over. You, like a draw this size, maybe a minute scruff sand, if that. Um, but because this is failing, we need to take most of it off and we need to focus in on any areas that are really, really damaged and coming away. So, you can use an electric sander like what I've done with the drawers. You can see here, let me bring you up. These are the drawers, electric sander. Obviously, a lot more of the finishes come off than probably what needed to come off, um, but it's fine and that will paint over quite nicely as well. Your other option is you can scrape it with your carbide scraper. Uh, we do stock these now as well, which I'm very excited about. Uh, you can use an 80 grit um, sandpaper. So we've got the, this is the Purico sponges. These are brilliant, I love these. But we've also got a roll of the 80 grit sandpaper from Unipro. We also stock this and we stock this. We stock everything at the moment, it's a nice change. And I've got them in stock as well. They are all on the website. Um, so you've got a few options. You do want to go for a nice coarse sandpaper. Um, going with, in with something like your 1000 grit, it's not going to do anything. So you want to get that finish off. So let's, let me show you the carbide because we can have a play around here. Let me bring you in a bit closer so you can see what we're doing. So let's start with down here. You just sort of run it along and I love the carbide because you've got that corner. You can get it into those sections and you can just scrape it off and you can see how easy like I'm not putting any pressure there and it's just falling off so your carbide's a really great option however it's difficult to get it up into like these little curves where my finger fits just nicely you can go over to dad gloves that's fine okay um he's wandering around like a lost puppy today <laughs> I don't know what to do <laughs> or at work there's nothing I can do um <laughs> If you can't get your carbide scraper into them, these sanding pads are great because they're nice and flexible. Um, if they do get quite gunked up as well, you can wash them. Um, either chuck them in your washing machine, although I don't recommend it. You can, but I don't recommend it. Um, just wash them under some warm water. Even some soapy water doesn't hurt. So you can go in with your sandpaper. Now, I love these. They are an 80 grit. In saying that though, 80 grit from one brand to another always changes. This is a lot coarser 80 grit than what this is. Um, this, in this brand, would be closer to a 220, 120, 220. It's coarse, but it's not super. Whereas this is significantly coarser. Uh, I don't know if you can sort of see it. You sort of can. You can see the grit. Whereas on this, it's quite flat. Um, like it will still scratch up your surface and prep fine. But sometimes this isn't enough. And on this, like you can see, it's a great product, but right now this isn't sufficient. Like I'm gonna be there all day trying to sand that off. So you've gotta pick the right tool for the job. Same with our thousand grit. That's not gonna do anything. It's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna smooth it out, but it's not going to get that finish off. So tear yourself off a piece of paper. You don't mean much and you can keep using them until the cows come home too. And then, do you see how quickly that scruffed that up? So using the right sandpaper for the job does make a difference as well. And we're just going to, I'm particularly going to focus on anywhere where it's starting to really, really fail. I'm going to run it over the whole drawer, obviously, but I want to focus in on anywhere where that finish is really, really obviously failing already. Now this finish does come off extremely easily. It's really not adhered at all. Um, this set's probably 20, 30 years old. It is very common um, for pine sets, unfortunately. So, quick scruff then in the areas where we're not as concerned and where it seems to have stuck. But in the areas where it has come off, 
We're just going to give it a little bit more. Now you can do this by hand or with your electric sander. I was already using my electric sander for the top. It was just as quick, just as easier and easier on my hands to quickly run over them with the sander. And then I'll come back through and I'll use my sandpaper and my hand to do along these edges. So that finish is just coming off anywhere where it's like comes off with one or two passes, it's failed. So you need to get that off. If you paint over it, you, your paint will just, it will, it will just fall off um, because there's nothing there holding that in place. So just along the edges there as well. And then, So, so it's just going to scratch off that excess anywhere and like this little detailing, unless there's a lot coming off like down the bottom here, you can just fold it over, create yourself a little corner and just pass over it once or twice. You don't have to like get in there and get all the finish off. Um, again, we are painting this, so we don't have to take all the finish off. We just want to make sure that any of that finish that was really, really failing has come off. That's fabulous. Just what we need today. It's raining, he tells me. Um, so, like that. Now, I'm really happy with that. What I am going to do, I'm going to take a finger that has got a nail. I'm just going to run that over again and just see if it's picking up. So, it's picked up a little bit just here. You don't have to do it over the whole thing. But anywhere where I know it was already failing, I just want to make sure. And this is sort of the easiest way to make sure. Something like that should do it. Up here is definitely coming away as well. If your finish is to the point where it's just all coming off and it's coming off super easy, by all means, sand it completely back um, or get like 90% of it off. Um, but if it's just in a few areas, you can definitely just touch, touch these sections with it. Um, the only thing to keep in mind as well when you do have a crackly finish, if you paint over those sections you've sanded it a little bit you've got most of it off but um there's still sort of some there or there's the outlines of it sometimes you can see that through your paint as well so keep that in mind um because it, it just and you can it's only a millimeter or two it's generally way less than that but um you can see those lines through your paint as well so keep that in mind when you are sanding as you can see i have sort of gone all the way along and i haven't left any sort of um paint left there at all that was not a very good sentence so and then once you've done that run your cloth over it have a good look at it see how it's looking see how it feels make sure there's no obvious lines as i just said we don't want to see them through the paint i'm just going to sand up here a little bit more it's still coming off um, and just make sure that's nice and smooth out so i'm just going to pull out my drawer Like so, and like a failing finish, this can happen on anything as well. These are pine, um, but it, literally anything. Um, it can be a fairly new piece or it could be 20, 30, 50 years old. You never know. Um, and every single piece is different. I'm just going to go up in here as well, just because my sander couldn't quite get up in there. I just want to make sure that I've got it all. Um, and then along the, let me pop you out a little bit. Along this base as well, I couldn't get my sander along here. So I'm just going to quickly go over it with my by hand. The bases are pretty good. Um, I found it was mostly the drawers and the top. Um, I did get a quick video of me sanding it earlier as well and a video beforehand. And you can see it looks like the finish is cracked. Um, sometimes it's due to like humidity or something's been spilt on it. Sometimes it just happens over time as well. So I'm just going to quickly sand along those two edges. I'm going to go down the sides as well. Again, we don't have to take all this finish off. We're just um, scratching it up. So we've got our sides. Again, I've run over these with my electric sander. 
to make sure we're nice and stable. I don't want this paint coming off. This is also a commission, so I really, really don't want this paint coming off. Um, I don't like to disappoint my clients. Uh, and I always do my due diligence anyway when I'm doing a piece like this, but I do want to make sure that my finish is good to go for years to come. Um, you can see up here, I sort of got most of it. We'll just run that along that top bit there a little bit. Looking good. Now, the feet. Let's give them a quick sand as well. Uh, what's behind me? Hang on. way to do feet is to sand them by hand uh, and you can see let me bring you in and down can you see how that's all that's just coming off like I can scratch that off with my fingernails it's just falling off so give that a really good sand um, I always pay more attention to the base of pieces as well or like a few seconds extra attention um, bases and feet anywhere where it's gonna get kicked and knocked thinking a vacuum, knocking it constantly. We don't want that paint to come off. So we are gonna make sure that these feet are really well sanded as well. We wanna make sure that there's no issues there either. So I'm gonna go up and around the sides. You don't have to get it like into every single crevice, um, but you wanna get it the most that you can. Um, there's no easy way to do Things like this, do it however you can. My hands have absolutely had enough today between the two sanders um, and the vibration. My hands are not super happy at the moment. I've got arthritis in my hands and um, some days are better than others, but they're definitely, I'm gonna end up like my mum where I really can't do a lot on some days and I'm going to pay for this tomorrow. Um, to make it a little bit easier on your hands, if holding a piece of sandpaper doesn't work, you can use something like your sponge. It is a little bit easier. It does the same job, and it, it's still sufficient. You might need to press a little bit harder in some areas, but it still does the job. Um, otherwise, you can get like a block. Um, you can get foam blocks as well, and then you can use the coarser sandpapers on those as well. I'm just going to come around this side for a second. Make sure you get the underside of them as well. And we just want to get most of that off there. Right. So I am, um, what are we going to do? I'm going to stand it back up. We're going to get our primer on the rest of it. I'm going to leave the feet and I'll come back to the feet later. Um, just because... That's boring and you guys don't want to watch that. Let's do some painting instead. <laughs> um, so normally I would, obviously, I would uh, do all the feet and I'd get all the sanding done first, but we can prime the rest of it and then come back to the feet. It's fine. I just don't want this to be like 20 minutes of me sanding feet. Um, so, yes. Just, I just wanted to demonstrate is what I'm looking for. Right, now, how do I stand you back up again? Nobody knows... Oh my gosh. Where's the table? It's there. Right. These bed sides are heavy. They are really, really, really heavy. Alright, so just grab your cloth. These have already been cleaned. I do need to wipe out the insides a little bit more, but they have already been cleaned. Um, I just use really hot soapy water to do the cleaning. And then we're just going to wipe over them with our cloth, just to remove the dust. Then careful please, Oliver. <sighs> hey, hey, no, Oliver, please. Not a good decision, stop. I will come and get them down for you in a minute. We've got metal walls and he's throwing magnets up on them and now he's trying to get them down. Um, now, I'm just looking at this side, this bit here. Just need a little bit more of sand. Sometimes it's, uh, you need to sort of wipe that dust off just to sort of see where you're at with a piece. Okay, now we've done that. We're up to priming. 
Obviously, I am going to come back and do those feet later. But let's get the rest of it primed. Now, the top we're not painting. I always leave my tops to be like the very last thing that I do. So, um, when it's like 90% sanded, I will finish sanding it and then finish it um, once I've done all my painting. Okay? Uh, it doesn't matter if you get paint on that raw timber because it comes off super easy so don't stress. I always do my tops last. You don't want to get paint accidentally on your finished timber uh, because you then potentially up for refinishing that whole timber and then you're just doubling your work. So tops are always last. Now for primer, we've got, we're painting this with Pure Eco's Carbon, which is our black. I would use a grey primer. Now this jar is almost empty. This is the 1.4 litres. Um, we do stock it, but we only get it in occasionally. If you want a 1.4, please sing out and we can order it in for you. Otherwise, they come in the 600 ml jars or they come in a 200 ml jar as well. Um, I think the 200 ml are, can I read the price from here? I think they're $20. The 600 ml are 45 and the big ones are 89. Um, and these are 1.4 litres. So I've got a little bit left here, but that's obviously not going to be enough. It'll be enough to get this bedside done, but um, it's probably not, ooh, probably not going to be enough to do the rest of it. So what we're going to do, and I just want to show you this because it's been a while. We're going to take, this is a white um, basin blocker. And hang on, I've got a carbon here. How much is left in here? I didn't actually look. Oh, hang on. You can tint your basin blocker. So if you just got the white, tint it. Um, I don't want to do a white underneath the black because it means I'm going to have to do more coats of my black. Now there's quite a lot in there. We're not going to need all of that. So what I'm going to do is, um, do I want to pour it in that pot? Yeah, that's fine. All right, so we're going to pour it in here. So there is a little bit, like you can see in there, there's a little bit left. What we're going to do, we're going to add some of our carbon. Let me just bring you over here. All right, so we're gonna scoop out. There's, oh, actually, there's really nothing in here. No, all right, no, I'm gonna put it into that. So there's like, oh, a spoonful of carbon left in there. So I'm just gonna pour some of my white into there and this is gonna be my primer. I don't use white very much, so I'm happy to to do this. I more just had the white on hand um, for workshops. So I've just tipped it in there, uh, about half a jar. And then you just stir it up and this basic color theory, is that what it's called? Um, white and black makes gray. So now we've got a gray primer. Um, it really doesn't hurt the basin blocker at all to have some carbon mixed in. I've got, what, a teaspoon mixed into about 200 ml. Uh, and this will be more than enough to uh, stain all of the, uh, not stain, to prime all of these pieces as well. So you can see we've now got a grey primer. So this is a really handy tip if you've only got the white on hand and you're doing something a darker colour. Um, it's also a great option if you're doing something in like a brighter colour, say an orange or a red, tip some of that colour in with your primer. And um, it just creates a nice base to then go over as well and helps that coverage. Now I've got a grey primer. And um, so I can use what's left in my jar here. Uh, now I've got paint all over me. That went well, didn't it? Uh, but we've now got a primer ready to go. So um, let me grab my other couple of drawers. Uh, no, it's fine. They can say there. We'll just prime this one and then I... Because I've still got to sand that edge of those ones. So I'll use... What I've got left of our other grey primer first. Um, our brush is a 50ml today. And remembering your primer does not have to be perfect. We're not looking for perfection when we're priming. We're literally just looking to get that paint on there. Like so. And this is going to help our paint stick. Uh, if we're worried about tannin bleed through, it's going to block that tannin. And it's just going to help make sure that's what we're looking for. So it's not perfect, but it's on. Um, 
it's gonna, yeah. Make sure our paint sticks. Our silk finish needs some help. Um, chalk finish, if you're using chalk paint, um, it sticks to just about anything. I would probably prime these anyway. I have had um, chalk finish. The only time I've ever had problems with adhesion is when it's like a pine piece like this. Only time I've ever had an issue. So I would prime anyway, um, but we're using silk finish. Silk finish needs some help to adhere. It's got the built-in top coat. Um, and it just ne it, it needs some help, so we give it the help that it needs. Do your draw, pop it out. Normally, I just line all my drawers up in a row. Um, I love doing sets like this, but I hate the drawers. Um, it's just, I'm excited to have it done, and it's an easy thing to do, but the drawers just seem to go on forever. So I'm just using the very last of what I've got here as well. Um, so while it's all fun and games, the actual amount of drawers just, it drives me nuts and I'll be excited to have this one done and not do another one for a while, I think. So I'm just going to sand paint up and down. Get that paint on however you can. Um, your primer will feel, it won't feel rough, but you'll be able to feel that grippiness of it as well once it's dry. Um, so it does have that nice feel to it, which we like, and that's what helps our paint stick as well. Okay, just like so. You're literally just trying to get it on there. I'm trying not to get paint all over my fingers, but I'm not winning here. You can absolutely roll this, um, and I will roll the rest. I've just got a brush right now. I don't actually know where my roller is. I'll have to find it. Um, but you can absolutely roll, and something like this, um, I would I would normally roll as much as possible. The only bits that I would paint are like these um, the curves on the base and those bevels in the drawer, just because a roll is going to be a little bit more difficult to get into those areas. Spinning it around. So now we do the side. Obviously, big flat areas are way easier to roll, and I will definitely be rolling the rest, and I'll also be rolling our carbon. Um, but this is what I grabbed because I didn't think of that. So this is what we're using. So I sort of like to do top and bottom, like so. Oops. And then up and down on the rest. Again, does not have to be perfect. Primer is a great opportunity to sort of have a practice of your brush strokes as well if you're using a new product um, that you haven't used before, or a new brush, um, and just in general, if you just want to have a practice at getting nice brush strokes, it's really forgiving. Um, so it, it is a really, really nice option to have a bit of a practice as well. So I just make sure there's enough on my brush to sort of go one into the other. But again, I'm not too fast about um, brush strokes or anything like that. So you just don't want to be like doing this the whole way down. You do want to try and go up and down a little bit. You can go side to side as well. The primer, this is the Pure Eco one. It does self level to an extent as well. So it does have that beautiful property that we love. The silk finish does self level a lot and we'll get a really nice finish with the silk finish as well. Hang on. It just want to turn. There we go. So doing the other side. Again, top and bottom. This is just generally what I find works best for most pieces. Now you can do your primer if you find, and sometimes you will notice it after you prime. If you find you've got any big, deeper holes or damage that you feel like needs to be filled, we are going to be painting this one solid colour. Um, you can absolutely do that after your primer as well. Sometimes you need that primer on there to really see them as well. So um, if you feel like there is any spots, you can absolutely fill them. We now stock the Timbermate filler as well. Um, we did a live on that yesterday. So up and down, however you like. Just dip it into this one now, because that jar's pretty much empty. So this is the one I've just dipped in, is the one that we made, the primer that we made uh, with the carbon and the white basin blocker. Uh, 
Um, and because we have electric sanded this, we do have some raw timber with that finish as well. So it's just going to give us a nice even base to then put our paint down onto. Done. Priming. Um, so obviously I've still got to do the feet, but I will um, wait for this to dry, flip it over, finish sanding those, and then I'll do that. Uh, but I think that's it. That's all I wanted to show you. So I'm going to go and finish scruff sanding all of these. I'm just going to scruff sand the bases and around the drawers and the feet on all of them. So that's probably going to take me another hour. Um, and then and then I'll prime the rest. I'm, or what is it? It's 12 o'clock. I highly doubt I'll be back again today. I'm going to try, but I don't think I will be. Will I be back today? 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. No, I'm not going to be back today. Um, I'm going to just get all the prep done today. So Monday, um, I'll be back and we're going to do our carbon. And again, I'll just show you on the one, just so it's not a really long video. Um, but I'll show you carbon. It's absolutely beautiful. I haven't shown carbon in so long. It is one of my favourite colours. It's so deep and it looks so good in silk finish. The finish of it is just... It's chef's kiss. It really is. It's beautiful. So, um, that's it for me. Have a wonderful weekend. I think we're in for some more storms, so stay, stay dry. And I'll see you Monday. Monday morning, I think. Oh, no, Monday afternoon. I'm kid-free Monday afternoon. Monday afternoon, I will be seeing you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, if you're on YouTube, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. I will see you Monday. Bye.